Hello audience. In this video I'm going to show you how to set the ignition timing, how to run the wires from the commutator to the coils, and set the firing order on a Ford Model T. I've been putting off making this video for quite some time just because there's a lot of different aftermarket commutators out there. Some require different ways of setting the timing, and I couldn't figure out how to be an expert on all of them, so I just decided not to. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on the Ford roller timer that most Model T's had originally. And that's what the truck has, so we're going to use that as an example. The first thing I'm going to do is take the radiator off, which is completely unnecessary for timing it, but it'll make it easier to film. And there it is. So I'm going to take it apart and show you how to assemble it. Now this is the timer, or the commutator, whatever you want to call it. It has four terminals, one for each cylinder, and how to wire that up we'll talk about later. But this determines which cylinder fires and when it fires. This is the timer brush, which has a roller, hence the name Roller Timer. This attaches directly to the camshaft and rotates with it. Now, when it works, obviously this goes inside of it. This is grounded to the chassis, and whenever it contacts one of these parts, it grounds it, which completes the circuit to the coil and fires that cylinder. Now how all that works is too much to explain for this video, but all you need to know is whenever the brush contacts one of these, it fires a cylinder. So now we'll go assemble it. And now we'll install the timer brush. Now for this, we don't have to worry about timing it, because there's no gear drive between this and the cam. It is the cam, so there's no way it can jump out of time. The timing is set with this alignment pin that goes in this hole, and the brush will only go on one way. If you put it on backwards, there's no way to put the pin in it. So then we install the pin. And then the collar that goes over it. And then the nut that holds it on. Next, we'll install the commutator and set the timing. Now, according to specifications, the center of this bolt and the center of this hole should be exactly two and a half inches apart. That's just about right. But that's where it should be when the spark lever is in the fully retarded position. The next thing we do is adjust the rod that goes to the commutator. Now we've already set the position for this. This goes to the spark rod and should be set in the fully retarded position. And this should drop right in. It's currently a little too long. It won't fit in here, so we need to adjust it. And we adjust it by bending it, particularly here and here. And that's it. The last thing to do would be to install a cotter pin on each end, but I still need to attach the wires, so I'm going to take it apart again. And now it's time to sort out the wiring. Now like I said, the commutator has four terminals on it, one for each coil. 
and since you can't rotate the brush from the cam, the cylinder position is always in the same place. So we just have to wire this according to the firing order. Now these, strangely, do not go by cylinder number, they go by wire colors. There's black, red, green, and blue. As for the wiring, there are a few options. One way is to buy a new wiring harness, and you can get good quality reproduction ones in cloth insulated wire as they were originally, like what this one started out as. This is the one off the touring car. The problem with that is the commutator is downwind from the crankcase breather, so after about a month of driving, all four wires are black and you can't wash the oil out of these. Once they're stained like this, you can't tell one from another. What some people do is just make their own wiring harness, which is what I did last time I put the truck together, which is what this is. However, I was on a low budget, so I made all four wires the same color. So I'm going to make a new one pretty much like this, except color code it properly. Now the original wiring diagram is kind of difficult to read, but luckily I have this aftermarket timer that already has the colors embossed on it. Now this one is number one, and the brush turns counterclockwise. So this is two, this is four, and this is three, because the firing order is one, two, four, three. So black is one, red is 2, green is 4, blue is 3. Alright, I have the other end of the harness attached to the coils. Now the coils are cylinder 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they're wired black, red, blue, and green. And the wiring is done. So the next thing I'm going to do is put this back together. Now the book recommends coating the inside of the timer with Vaseline. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's it. It runs great. 
In fact, it runs exactly the same way it did before because there was nothing wrong with it. Now, the tech information I got from this, I got entirely from the Ford service manual, which, if you have a Model T and you don't already have one, I highly recommend getting this. It has been extremely informative and answered a lot of technical questions. The only thing I'll point out with this is the commutator is referred to by most as a timer. Even the parts vendors do that. In this book, it's called a commutator. So if you search this for information on a timer, you're not going to find it. I learned that the hard way. Anyway, that's it for now. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.